Frank Serpico was the man who changed the culture of the New York City Police Department. In his famous testimony uh, back in 1971, where he exposed police corruption, which he described at the time as being systemic, widespread throughout the New York City Police Department. Well, I'll make up what Don took from He became a police officer in 1960, coming into the police department, as many police officers do, with an idealistic view of how the police should operate in a professional manner, being courteous, respectful to the public we serve. And it was after some time uh, while in the police department where he received an assignment in the plain clothes unit where they would uh, look to investigate crimes of vice, such as rac racketeering crimes, uh, narcotics sales, and so, so on. And it was at that time when he was exposed to the corruption, which he ultimately came to expose. He tried to avoid this, but it was so far spread and widespread that he tried to solicit some assistance from his uh, superior officers. But the bureaucracy moved very slowly. I can't wait for Delaney to call, and I can't play their game anymore. I'm right in the middle. I can't take it. Frank, you mean to say the commissioner didn't get in touch no, with you? No, he didn't get in touch with me. Not a Frank, word. I no investigation. No undercover I, work. I nothing. no idea, Frank. Well, Captain, I think it's only fair to tell you. I've been to outside agencies. I'm going to go to more if I have to. I've been to outside agencies. Holy mother of God. Donnie Brasco being on the federal side, the, uh, the FBI was involved with all of that uh, portion of it. Frank Serbico being on the, the city side of it, the New York City Police Department, but their missions were, were the same. They were the same, uh, weeding out corruption, uh, crime. Uh, a little bit different with Donnie Brasco. Donnie Brasco was more, they infiltrated uh, the, the uh, mob, organized crime, uh, where Frank Serpico was looking to weed out corruption amongst the ranks of the New York City Police Department, of police officers. This frustrated him because it continued to flourish the corruption. So finally, uh, he participated in a New York Times article about police corruption in New York City. And after this portrait of, uh, of, the, of the corruption was exposed by the New York Times, the then mayor of city, the city of New York, John V. Lindsay, took action to try to control this. And he appointed a, a five-person panel, which was later known as the Knapp Commission, for the uh, chair, chairperson of it, the Whitman Knapp. And they conducted hearings on, on police corruption, in which Frank Serpico then testified. So by his efforts, um, he changed, as I said, the culture of the New York City Police Department. Frank Serpico felt that there was something wrong at the time where an honest cop would have to fear a dishonest cop. That, of course, that culture no longer exists. It's now the dishonest cops, when they are found out, who fear the honest cops because they know that this will not be tolerated any longer in the New York City Police Department. Frank Serpico, say hello to Don Rabello. He's going to be your new partner. He um, was a visionary, as was Jesus Christ, as was John Lennon, in that he saw how the police department must be, must be. And so he took the steps, as unpopular as it was by his colleagues at the time, but he took them anyway in order to change this culture to what we have today. Uh, today, the New York City Police Department is a world-renowned police agency. What's this? Uh, one of the biggest in the world, certainly in the United States, number one in the United States as far as numbers go, and, and our crime-fighting initiatives, and all moved forward due to the efforts, large, largely due to the efforts of Frank Serpico. This course in fingerprint identification to be given at John Jay College. This course will be available to those patrolmen who wish to make themselves eligible for assignment to the Bureau of Criminal Identification, BCI which is generally considered to be a path to a detective's gold shield, signed Captain McGuire. Sidney Lamet at the time, um, had a great technical advisor, I believe, police technical advisor, and perhaps it was even Frank Serpico himself that assisted in this endeavor. But the uniforms were accurate for that time period. They're now changed for 2010. But um, everything is, is very accurate. 
in the way it was portrayed. In fact, even uh, the final, one of the final scenes when he was shot in the face took place in Williamsburg, Brooklyn. Uh, the actual location was on uh, a street called Driggs Avenue. But the actual filming where this took place was also in Williamsburg, Brooklyn, at a different building, but the same neighborhood. Same neighborhood. So uh, they went to great lengths to ensure that the film was portrayed in an accurate fashion.